time then to rebuild my water pump. I filmed the removal from the boat of the water pump, but the Cornish Film Classification Board rated that footage BS. I'm not sure exactly what that stands for. I'm going to have to shoot it again. Um, in the meantime, this is the reassembly of the pump with the new parts and the new parts. So, a quick run through then. I'll be using the original uh, outer circlet, that's the bearing retaining circlet. Here is the pump body that I've cleaned, and I used uh, drain cleaner for that basically, caustic soda. Very weak solution, but um, I monitored very carefully. I looked at it every 10 minutes really to see whether I could get a toothbrush on and get the stuff off. Most of it's come off. There it is, nothing wrong with the pump body. Uh, and obviously that. This is an original uh, equipment Yanmar O-ring. And that goes over there to seal the pump from the engine. This is the one that I took out. I'm guessing that's not original equipment. Not that it probably matters, but there you go. So it'll be a new, new O-ring for that. I've got these from eBay to replace these. And what they are is the, the bolts for the impeller cover. And what that will do is make changing the impeller a toolless job. And I can see very easily the situations where that's going to come in handy. This kit I got from... Uh, so in my, in my 100 quid kit, I get both the bearings, the shaft, the two seals, and I don't know if you can see it in there, a tiny little circlip. It's actually this. That's the old one. It's this circlip. Just there on top of the seal. Um, so that is the full rebuild uh, kit there. Ready to go. Okay, let's do it. Now, I haven't test fitted any of this, so you're seeing it as it would be if you got the kit and tried to put it together. Uh, where did I put that? There it is. <laughs> so this seal faces out towards the impeller because it's designed to keep seawater from getting in past the shaft. So that, that lip faces out. And on the inside, you won't be able to see it in this light, there is a slight bevel on the recess that this seal sits into. So I'm hoping I can just press fit it in there. Let's find out. It's the right way up. That's a good start. I've got a socket here, which from my set is a 13mm socket, which fits pretty much exactly around the outside of that. I'm just going to see if I can press it on. There it goes. Better. Oh, much better. Okay. Now I've quite deliberately not lubricated the outside of that seal because there's no retaining clip on it. There is room for it to move. I don't know if you can see this vent or not. But actually, let me see if I can find a little screwdriver. Say a picture's worth a thousand words, don't they? I can poke a screwdriver in that vent. You can see it there, look, see. There's nothing actually retaining that seal. Nothing presses against it. If it was to come loose, that would be it, wouldn't it? Uh, this seal then obviously faces with the lip out because it's stopping oil from the engine coming out into that little space that I pointed out earlier. So this drops in on top of that. I've got a feeling this one might be a little bit more challenging to get in, but we'll see. Oh no. Look at that, look. It's child's play. Just like that. Good. Right, that seal, I don't know whether you can see it or not, but there is, there is a lip here in the barrel of this, and that's where the bearing sits against. So that seal has to be pretty much flush with that lip, and it isn't quite yet. I'm just going to push it down a little bit more. Just switch the camera off and then realised I was doing something relevant. So, using this side, obviously there's a risk that that's going to move around on the top of the seal there and damage something. Because there's nothing coming up the middle, if I use this side, that'll be a little bit more uh, kind, a little bit kinder. And I can look down the middle and centre it right over the middle of the seal there, see where it's not flush. Okay. Now. So 
So it doesn't matter which way round these bearings go on the shaft, but the recess there has a circlip in it. And strangely, well, I do find this a little bit odd, one bearing goes below the circlip and the other bearing goes above the circlip. That means if I assemble this completely now, to get it in there when I have to tap it, I'll be putting quite a lot of strain on the inner part of the race by beating on the outside of the race. And that'll be separated by a circlip. So you can see there's a possibility there for the outside of the bearings to pinch together while the middles can't. So I'm gonna be a little bit cunning with that. I'll uh, insert this bearing first, then I'll put the circlip or the other bearing and the circlip on and I'll put that, that you'll see. Less talking while doing. Here we are. And I think these are usually a little bit stiff as they start to go in, but once they're past the top of that, they just drop in there. Where's that socket? Mm, might go one size bigger there. Yes. And with that, it probably won't take much encouragement. Beautiful. There, as I suspected. Once it's in, it's in. I'm just going to give that a bit of three and one on the race there. It's lubricated, of course, by the engine oil. But I don't want it to run dry or even damp for even a few seconds. There, that bit's done. Now, this other bearing. Interesting. Okay. New circlip. Here it is. And of course, the right tool for that job is a pair of circlip pliers. Try that one again. There we go. It was easy that time. So that circlip is properly seated in there. That's great. Right. I've got it in. It took a bit of coaxing, that. And as you can see, not brutalising, just coaxing. So I've had to rest it between two bits of wood, so the slot there goes down through the bits of wood, but this bit rests on the wood. You know, it's not ideal. Yeah, it's in. Uh, right, what's next then? Now this shaft has to pass down through down through that bearing, which it will, because this is wasted and the bearing just sits on there, but the bearing's got to be able to get onto there. And then down through both the seals. I'm just going to put a bit of three and one on this shaft. Which of course is surgically clean. Just to help it along, really. circlip to go home without I want to feel it just brush the top of the bearing of course none of this probably matters at all does it but I don't want there to be any doubt you know in my mind when it's done I don't want to go could I have done that better did I miss a bit there Let's see if it snaps home a bit better this time See, that did feel a bit better. Good. A little pre-lube on there. There we are. Beautiful new O-ring. To seal it. Must make sure when I put it on that that locates properly in the um, lug in the engine there so that it does actually turn. So all that's left is for me to put the um, impeller in. I haven't got it, can't do that. Uh, but when it is in, it's all been nicely cleaned up here. Incidentally, I was missing an impeller blade, not from the impeller that I put in last year when I serviced it, but the one that I took out had a missing impeller blade. 
and I found it in the spout there when I was cleaning all of this, the whole thing, which is good news, eh? Sometimes I imagine the water lock on the exhaust being full of impeller blades that have been there for decades. Beautiful. There. So I won't show you fitting the impeller because, quite honestly, that's like watching paint dry. There's nothing interesting there. But that is the complete rebuild there of the salt water pump on a Yanmar 1GM 1.0. Thank you very much. See you next time.